Hi everyone, in this presentation we will tell you about our experiences about IoT hacking. I will also mention the weakness and misconfiguration that we have identified and can be detected. But firstly I want to talk about myself. Uh, when I look at myself in general, there are a few keywords I can use about me. These are co-founder, author, speaker, and trainer. So uh, apart from this, there is not much uh, I can say for myself. And I can say I love Wi-Fi hackers. This place also contains some information about my friends. Since we cannot make the presentation live and we are, in, we are in different locations. I am the only one giving the presentation right now. Let's start, guys. Uh, in IoT hacking research, uh, there is something that everyone is serious about. How should IoT devices be analyzed? What is a methodology? What tools should I use in IoT hacking or research. Many, many, many questions like how can I find weakness in IoT devices? In order to answer these questions, we should be able to look deeply for understand everything correctly. In this context, the first step is to choose the product to be analyzed. In order to do this, we should ask ourselves the following questions. Which industry am I targeting? Which area of the industry I target? For example, your target in the financial sector may be product used in banks. Your target in the health sector may be products used in patient rooms of hospitals. If you ask yourself this question and write down the answer, you will have defined your goal. After defining the target, the product must be supplied. There are several solutions for this. You can contact the manufacturer of the target product. You can contact the customer using the target product. You can buy the target product. By using one of these methods, you can contact the manufacturer, developer, or customer to improve security. This is most important step because now your target industry and target area are certain. You also provided the product to model to model this place correctly. We should know. We should know that every product has many properties associated with it. Not that these features associated with the product itself can actually be used as an attack point against the product. For this reason, you need to take a piece of paper, paper in your hand and write the feature associated with the product. You can try it yourself for understanding attack surface mapping. Once you have correctly defined the attack points, you will need a necessary hardware and software to perform the associated attack. And as you see, this resource you see in the presentation will be very, very, very helpful for this. You can find a lot of hardware and software in this resource. Finally, after all of them, you can start exploiting the product now. In this presentation, uh, I would like to share the detail of three types and four products. The first is a robotic assistance. I can say about the 
this target, uh, this is a robot assistant and it uh, has target features such as Wi-Fi connection, internet connection and USB inputs and you know and others. And this target and product used in hospital, restaurant, airport and in other possible areas. On this product, uh, we found weakness such as privilege escalation, hidden admin panel, weak password, unsecured communication, and login bypass. Let's take a closer look at them and for uh, understand uh, deeply. This is a login bypass in this target. You know, usually on the main screen, there are processes related to the service of the device. But remember, there was a keyboard input. When you press a fifth key combination with a keyboard attached here, you can bypass the service screen and access the terminal directly. After accessing the terminal with the previous weakness, we gathered information about the device with the uname-e command. Then we saw that there was a kernel weakness and we increased the authority on the system with the exploit we downloaded from uh, exploit db. Another feature is the hidden admin panel in this product. You know, uh, clicking on a particular area of the screen multiple times opens this screen. If it is also protected by a weak password, you can directly access it in admin authority. And yes, we did it. As my authority increased on the product, I started to try different things. And in an analysis, I saw that uh, the product performed firmware and other software update were insecure protocols like FTP and you know FTP is a unsecure protocol and if attacker there is an environment can sniff uh, and uh, can see username password and others in the traffic. After all of them I took control of the robots by capturing the information of the server where the robots were updated. This is now uh, a zombie net, uh, robot network. And, uh, we can do anything on the robots and we can control. This is a second story about uh, smart scooter. And I can say about this product. It's a widget uh, used for transportation pur purpose. It has a feature that can be targeted such as smart lock, mobile application, developer and other and, and we will talk about it. And this uh, smart scooter generally used in short distance uh, for short distance transportation like campus of the university, you know. And I also so some people use it to carry household uh, items in Turkey. When we look uh, at this product, we found that there are basically four different attack points. The most important of this attack point is, uh, of course, the human factor and is ignorant in most research. Here is the mobile application. Uh, there are many functions that can be used as an attack vector in this mobile app and in general every electrical and smart scooter also saw the same function like reserve but uh, you know uh, you can reserve your scooter you can ring uh, uh, start ringing function and uh, you can log in, register, reset, you, you know. And this mobile application, uh, it could be a APK file or API file, you know. 
and uh, this is singing function and at the same time you can light the device constantly so people around you understand that someone has found it first. In our study we have seen that uh, this function can only be triggered without authorization by the QR code number on this device. Uh, we can watch this video. And uh, we captured uh, mobile application traffic for ringing function. Uh, and when a uh, delayed uh, authorization header from the request, uh, we, we saw we can uh, repeat every time this function not limit and not uh, anything for secure and uh, when I analyzed the mobile apps for two different products of the manufacturer I saw that they use the same as key value as hard coded and as you see in the presentation screen Another weak point is again from within the mobile application, hosting hard-coded information on mobile application is a common problem. Here too, I saw that the secret password information was left statically in mobile application and when you analyze uh, any mobile application related with the smart scooter, you can uh, find the same bug. So uh, in a uh, mobile application penetration testing related smart uh, hardware uh, you should check some static information you, you can find uh, a lot of hard coded information like super password is key well the main uh, weakness here is the human and uh, the devices that he uses therefore we can expand the attack surface by asking uh, the following question for develop computer connected any Wi-Fi connected any USB he opening every email and download file or run any file operation system is updated mobile phone uh, of the developer is jailbreak or rooted uh, after this question we can launch a social engineering attack or hack the wireless network the person is using. In our research we saw that there is a weakness here. The developers are very careless. And uh, this is smart lock used a lock and unlock the smart electrical scooter. It usually has a QR code in, on it and has Bluetooth low energy communication. It is also the main point associated with the mobile application. The most danger point here is the QR code, which does not directly harm uh, the smart scooter vehicle. But we have seen that uh, it is an attack point for users indirectly. Think like that. You can try to install mal malware on the phone with the fake QR code or redirect users to phishing page with the fake QR code on the smart scooter. And uh, this story about the uh, fifth smart lock, we want to tell you about uh, it uh, in no time. Uh, we can say about this target, this uh, smart lock, it has target points such as mobile application, web service, internet connection, Bluetooth low energy communication, firmware and hardware. All of them uh, is, uh, all of them is uh, attack vectors for us, for our research. And this, the smart locks, uh, it it could be uh, used in hospital, home, uh, in the smart scooter, and you know, and others. There are a lot of weaknesses here, 
in the smart lock, especially if you are using cloud-based devices, using your home wireless network, you will lose communication with your smart device with a Wi-Fi DOS attack. Another point is the wrong authorization made uh, tough the mobile application so an attacker can control your locks. The weakness of the product is related to the web service that the mobile application communicate with. As you can see, there are many related points. And uh, in the knock lock API, uh, bind and unbind function is vulnerable uh, related with broken authentication. Attacker can bind or unbind, uh, can use bind and unbind function without uh, any security uh, restriction, you know. Finally, we have seen in seen that other users' profile information can be updated without authorization in Lock Lock API. And thanks a lot of Rootshell Labs for their support and thank you for listening to us.